Hi everyone, my name is Melissa. In this video, I want to take a closer look at the Enter Data option in Power BI and how to use it. In by far most cases, we'll bring in data by connecting to a data source. Now, that won't change of course, but Power BI also offers ways to manually create tables. One of which is using the Enter Data option that you can find in the Data section on the Home tab. There are three common use cases I want to discuss with you. The first is creating tables for measures. Now, there are many different ways to organize a model. A common practice is to create one or more separate tables to store measures. You can use the Enter Data option to create an empty table. All we have to do is assign it a name. I'll call that Key Measures. We can create a measure, so I'll right click that table, select a new measure, create a quick measure, and now we can hide column one, select hide. You'll notice that the icon in front of the table name has changed, indicating it is now a dedicated measure table. And the second use case is creating a small supporting table. If you want to add a table for dynamic grouping, for example, you can use Enter Data to create that supporting table on the fly. So I'll go back to the Home tab. In the Data section, select Enter Data. Here I can paste in my table. Let's give that a name. And press Enter. Of course, there's an important consideration or limitation to keep in mind when adding manually created tables to a model. Because if at some point you need to modify or update the contents in that table, you can only do so from within the actual PBIX file. So if there's any chance your supporting table might be subject to change, I'd recommend to store that in a separate file and connect to that. So when a change is required, all you have to do is update that file and with the next refresh, your model is updated. And the final use case is creating a quick and small mockup model for demo purposes or support queries. Because you can copy and paste data directly into the enter data window as long as it doesn't exceed a 3000 cell limit. And that's convenient because then you no longer have to keep or supply a separate source file along with your PBIX. I'll choose Enter Data. And I'm not going to select the header, but I'm going to leave it in the first cell and paste in my values. And it automatically suggests to promote headers. Now, if I want to undo that, I can do so right here. In this case, of course, that's not needed. I'll call this table sales and press load. Now, unlike tables created with DAX expressions, these tables all show up inside the query editor. So let's create a DAX table as well. I'll go to modeling, select new table. I'll call that DAX table. Let's go to the query editor. So I'll choose transform data. And you see that I have three tables here. We have our key measure table, our pricing segment table, and our sales table, but we don't have our DEX table. Now, if you need to make modifications to any of the tables, you can do that from inside the query editor. Say we wanted to add a sort column to our pricing segment table, for example. What I'll do is select that query and in the source tab, press that icon. This opens that create table window again, where we can modify the table contents or add new columns or rows, for example. 
In this case, I'll add a new column. I'll call that sort. And we'll enter a sort order. Once I press done and close and apply, these changes get loaded into my model. So I've covered the three most common use cases for the enter data option in Power BI. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. All the best. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the contents covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.